I awaken bright and early the next morning. Leanne and I have a quick spar and practice and return to the group just in time for breakfast. After we finish eating and clean up the camp, we waste no time resuming our journey towards Costa Coral. Costa Coral. Oh my god. <sighs> Please say the name of this place so I know for sure. Leanna looks wistfully at me. I bet she's just waiting for me to offer her a piggyback ride again. Good thing that was just a one-time deal. My muscles are still sore from carrying her all day yesterday. Car glances over at me and Leanna. Zack staying close beside her. No new wagers today. Nope. Too bad. I know. My source of entertainment's gone. This is gonna be a long trip. Kara hugs Zack's arm and pushes herself close to him. I'm sure I could find a way to keep you entertained. And I'm gonna start walking now. Same here. Amelia shoulders pack and leads the way. The pongo hops onto my shoulder as we set off. The road towards Costa Coral is clear, and we make good time. With the sun high in the sky, sweat pricks my skin. The temperature is much milder here than it was back north, so welcome change from the previous cold. We arrive at Costa Coral in the afternoon. As we pass through the gates, the first thing I notice is the salty breeze coasting through town. The houses and shops are all built higher above ground than what I'm used to seeing, with large, wide windows to let in the sun and breeze. We pass through the main square. People peruse the shops, where the bustle isn't quite as busy as the previous towns. Shopkeepers lay by the desk, fanning themselves with wide-woven fans. The slow pace of the town calms me. This would be a really nice place to just relax for a few days. There's a bright smile on Leanna's face as she enjoys the wind combing through her hair. Everyone seems to feel the same tranquility I do. After passing through town, we find the inn where we settle down. We order some food and situate ourselves near the open window. Amelia immediately consults her notes. Now that we have arrived at Coastal Coral, it would be in our best interest to survey the area and search for additional information, which can lead us to the Water Temple. So it's Costa Coral. No one answers her. I look at the rest of the group and they're staring out the window. Following their gaze, the view from the inn overlooks brilliant white sands and crystal blue water. Hi. The pongo pops out, of the, out from seemingly nowhere and settles near the window. It's so beautiful! Kara grins broadly and leans closer to the window to get a better look. Even Zack relaxes as he watches the gentle lapping of the waves. Only Amelia remains transfixed on her notes. Perhaps we should inquire with the locals here as to the whereabouts of the temple. Leanna reluctantly tears her gaze away from the beach. Well, I suppose we should do that. Or we could take a break from all that traveling and take some time to recharge and then scout for information. I vote that. Boy, boy. Pongo seconds that vote. Pongo's got good taste. Kara kneels down and pats the pongo on the head. He chirps happily. We have arrived here for a purpose, and that purpose should be fulfilled. That's true, but wouldn't we have more success after we've had a chance to rest and can search with fresh eyes? I've been feeling a bit pale after spending so much time in the cold north. It'd be so nice to just relax and bask in the sun for a while. The beach sounds like a great idea. There's a pause as we blink at Zack. Really? Of course. Leanna wrinkles her brow. There's no reward for going to the beach. Not everything I do has to have a reward. Yes, it does. Kara smirks and wraps herself around Zack. Obviously, his motivation for going to the beach is to spend more time with me. I take it back. Let's do Amy's thing. Hey! Amy looks thoughtful. The journey here has been long. I suppose a brief repose could be a good idea. Then it's settled. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't exactly pack my swimsuit. Good point. I noticed a few clothing shops we passed on our way here. Perhaps we may find something suitable within. Why don't we take a look at the shops, and then we all can meet down at the beach? We agree to the plan and begin to head off when Kara stops me and Zack. Nah, -uh. No boys allowed. What? It'll be way more fun if it's a surprise. Trust me. She winks and hurries out with Leanna and Amy before we can protest. That just leaves Zack and me to team up and shop for swimsuits. After leaving the inn together, we browse the local bazaar. 
We each flip through the racks. Zach grabs the first pair of dark swim trunks he can find and brings it up to the counter for purchase. Wow, that was fast. He shrugs. It's not like it really matters. I take a look at a few different styles, but ultimately decide on an orange suit. After buying our suits, we head down to the beach to get changed. We carefully tread down the stairs, carved into the wall of the cliff until our feet touch the warm sand. The beach is laden with visitors. Children build sandcastles or race by the water, shrieking when the waves lap at their feet. Even more children play along the cliffs, chased by their parents who fiercely scold them. Most people lounge beneath the sun, flipping every so often to even out their tans. Zack and I wait for the girls in a more secluded spot. Boy. I glance down and see the pongo has returned. You made it here before the girls. Boy. Is that just me or does he sound disappointed? We continue to wait. And wait. So, Zack, what kind of swimsuits do you think the girls will get? What the hell? Zack shrugs. Nice ones, I would guess. I nod. Like, why are they all stab ones? I mean, he's a shoot... like, he's a gunner. Shouldn't he have pierce scars, too? That doesn't really... like... Okay, so think about it like this. If he has all those slash marks, he has to shoot at, like, point-blank range for them to reach him. Like, why does he even fight with a gun if he's getting cut all the time? That makes no sense to me. <sighs> anyway, I'm really looking forward to seeing none of them. We'll go the creepy route. What kind of cute swimsuit Amy would select? <laughs> Zach frowns. Why are you thinking about Amy in a swimsuit? Why not? He gives me a disapproving look. Finally, we hear the girls before we see them. Kara leads the way and bounces into view. Her string bikini seems to be struggling to stay put. Hey guys! Were you waiting long? He responds with a low, guttural gurgle. Kara blinks. I mean, yes, we were waiting forever. She grins slyly. Sorry to keep you waiting. It took a while for me to find the perfect suit. She spins around. So, what do you think? Zach shrugs. It's fine. Kara pouts. Before she can respond, Leanne and Amy catch up to us. Okay, I would have bet money one of them was wearing the stereotypical Japanese school swimsuit, but luckily they aren't. Leanna's white bandeau suit hugs her in all the right ways, while Amy's pink ruffles make her look cute and girly. Like, what the hell is with these? And look at the girls. Amy's wearing a very appropriate swimsuit. I'm a bit surprised by how girly it is. I'm about to compliment her when I notice, <laughs> when I notice Zach watching me carefully. What? I didn't say anything. You were thinking it. I was just going to say that pink is a good color for her. Sure. He crosses his arms. Amelia walks right past us and settles into the sand. Uh, hey there, Amy. Greetings. What are you doing? I am selecting the prime location for me to begin my construction. Construction? Of the most structurally sound sand fortress. Boy, boy! The pongo bounces over to Amy and wobbles excitedly. Of course you may be of assistance. Anna pulls me aside as Amy starts digging in the sand. Why don't we go check out the water? Good idea. I follow Leanna out to the sea. She carefully dips her toe in the water. Exactly. I sneak up behind her and shove her into the water. Uh. She yelps instinctively and throws out her arms to channel magic, but she's not wearing her manipulator. Instead, she swings her arms wildly as she falls over. Sputtering. <laughs> Sputtering, she pushes herself back up and fixes a glare on me. Uh, it was an accident? She grabs my arm before I can move out of the way and yanks me towards her. I lose my balance and splash into the water with her. Come on in! The water's fine! Leanna splashes me and I dive out of the way before returning the splash. She ducks from the water, but a few droplets catch her. She grins mischievously and uses her arm to send a small wave my way. Whoa! I 
try to swim out of the way, but the wave splashes my face. That's how she wants to play. I use both my arms and send an even larger wave in Leanna's direction. She automatically moves her arm in a casting position, hoping to push the wave away from her, and realizes too late that she's still not wearing her manipulator. Old habits must die hard. The wave crashes around her. Oh, you are so going to regret that! Uh-oh. Let's not do anything rash now. I try to swim away, but some more distance between myself and her. For all I know, she's going to somehow send a tsunami my way. Leanna swims close. Leanna swims closer to close the gap. You're just having fun, right? I ready myself for the worst. But to my surprise, Leanna swims over to me and boops me on the nose. Huh? Fooled you! She giggles. <laughs> I got you all riled up for nothing. I flick water at her. Hey! I thought we were done with that! Now we're done. Leanna squeezes some of the water out of her hair. I think I'm ready to dry out a bit in the sun. Yeah, same here. Let's go check back with the others. We head back to the shore. Amelia's fortress looks to be nearly complete. That girl works fast. The pongo bounces from buttress to buttress, a little shovel in his mouth. That's cute. He's helping. Zack launches on the sand, his eyes closed while Kara pops beside him. She doesn't look too happy at Zack. As soon as she spots us, she rushes over to Leanna. I'm feeling kind of hungry. Are you hungry? Uh... Like, I was expecting there to be some sort of CG for this place, but there's not. It's just this. <laughs> Let's go get some food. She grabs Leanna's hand and drags her over to the food cart. I stand next to Zack. What was that about? Meh. <laughs> My favorite answer. Zack leans back in his beach chair. You do you, buddy. I consider nudging Zack to decide against it. He and Kara have a complicated relationship, and I'm not going to pretend to understand it. Leanna returns with an ice cream and seems excited to eat it. Kara trails behind her. She stops right in front of Zack, but turns to face Leanna. I am starving! When Leanna looks at Kara, she seems just as baffled as ever. Kara reveals a banana and nothing else. I thought she was starving. She peels the banana, then carefully maneuvers the fruit as far into her mouth as possible. Kara, be careful! If you take it all at once, you could choke! Kara grins and slowly pulls the intact banana out of her mouth. Oh, don't worry. I have great control over my gag reflexes. Zack starts coughing as his face turns red. But you're right. I'm just so hungry that I got a little eager. Is this better? She puts a sizable amount of the banana in her mouth at once, then noticing Leanna's chagrin, carefully pulls back a lot. She takes in a bit more, then pulls back. I don't think she's actually planning on eating that banana. She makes eye contact with Zack. You have weird eating habits. Kara's eyes flash, and she takes a vicious bite out of the banana. For some reason, I wince, and so does Zack. When she's done eating, Kara gets close to Leanna again. Oh, do you know what we forgot to do? Put on sunscreen! Leanna's eyes widen. You're right! You don't like to tan? It's not about tanning. It's about protecting your skin. Exactly! The more you know. Kara leads Leanna over to the beach, towels, and the two of them settle in. Then Kara smears a glob of sunscreen into her hands and starts rubbing lotion across her chest. Zack's gaze is fixated on the gentle rhythm of her hands. Leanna follows Kara's lead and begins deliberately spreading sunscreen over her skin. There you go! So, you finally get to see what you've all been waiting for. The Pongo at work. And notice it's only our character that has his mouth open. Suddenly, Kara's lying on her stomach on the towel and motions to Leanna. I turn to Zack. You know, I couldn't see it when you were on the bed in Wolfston in this pose. Now I'm starting to understand what you mean. I told you, it's the most attractive pose. Maybe not most attractive, but pretty attractive. Liana, do you think you could help me with my back? I'll return the favor. Of course! Liana kneels beside her and squirts the lotion into her hands. Suddenly, the bikini string is across Kara's back falls to the sides, undone. You'll be able to reach more this way. Leanna nods, then carefully rubs her hands along Kara's skin, making sure to spread the sunscreen evenly across her whole back. Oh, that feels so nice. 
Zack clears his throat and tries to look away, but his eyes are repeatedly drawn back to the girls. Even I start to feel the flush in my cheeks. As Lena's hands travels along Kara's back, the strings holding her bikini up fall loosely to her sides. Oops! That's okay. I don't want any tan lines anyway. Kara lets out a soft moan as Leanna finishes up her back. A small strangled sound escapes Zack's throat. I look over and notice a stream of blood trickling out of his nose. So, just in case that wasn't there before, there you go. I think you've got a bit of something. I gesture to his nose. I'm fine. <laughs> when Leanna is done, she helps retie Kara's swimsuit. As Kara stands, she turns around to speak to Zack and smirks when she notices the nosebleed. All right, Leanna, your turn. Leanna looks back at us and frowns. Uh, maybe later, when we don't have so much of an audience. I can close my eyes if that helps. It doesn't. Zack and I get shooed away while Kara gives Leanna the same sunscreen treatment. Zack wipes his nose and quickly returns to his usual self while I sneak as many peeks at the girls as I can. Kara seems very familiar with Leanna. My mind wanders back to all those times they shared a room. What actually happens behind closed doors? After a while, the girls return and Car throws a ball at us. Zack's lightning reflexes catch the ball. Nice catch! Where did you get this? Doesn't matter. Kara? She stole it. She giggles. I bought it, silly. It was with us the entire time. But I suppose you were a bit too distracted to notice. She winks. What game are we playing? Beach ball! Leanna grins. A classic beach game. How do you play? We'll split into teams. Me and Zach, and you and Leanna. We'll each stay on our own sides of the court and try to hit the ball over to the other side without letting it drop to the ground. This sounds suspiciously like beach volleyball. Uh, I don't like volleyball. I don't like volleyball. Uh, this isn't really my scene. Uh, we can't just back out and let them win. Sure we can. Are you really gonna make me play them alone? <laughs> no, then the teams are uneven. I'll play one match. Leanna grins. Don't worry, we'll definitely win. Get the manipulators. Kara smirks. Oh yeah? Should we make a wager? I pales, I remember the last time we made a wager. Let's just keep it a friendly match this time. Kara laughs. You better get into position, or this first serve will be an automatic point for me. Leanne and I hurry over to the other side of the court. There's a towel placed in the sand to divide the two line, two sides. Kara serves first, and Leanna dives to bump it. Then I spike it over the side, expecting the ball to smash into the ground, but Zack saves it and bumps it over. I scramble to reach it, but it lands gently in the sand. Okay, that wasn't the strongest start. It isn't long before Zack and Kara get into the swing of things. Soon the volleys to either side take longer and longer. At one point, Amy wanders over and sits down on the sidelines to watch. On the last volley, Kara spikes the ball over to our side. Leanna dives to bump it but misses, and by a breath and the ball bounces in the sand. Leanna lets out a frustrated groan. She serves the ball hard and it flies out of the court. Ah! It's okay. <laughs> Let's cheat. I have an idea. Leanna looks at me curiously. I don't know how those two are so good at this game. Me neither. But we can't let them win. No! I can fit a sphere in my pocket. Leanna furrows her brow. You're suggesting we cheat? It's only cheating if you get caught. It's necessary to winning. What we're doing right now isn't working. Besides, do you really want to have Zack and Kara lording over that one time they beat us at beach volleyball? Leanna's expression sours. Are you guys ready to play, or are you discussing how you'll forfeit? Leanna's eyes flash. Go get the crystal. I start coughing. Hold on, let me grab some water. I race over to the towels and grab one of the flasks of water. After checking one to make sure no one's watching, I slip the wind crystal into my pocket. Then I take a swig from the flask and return to the group. Leanna gives me a knowing look. Ready? I nod. At my signal, Zack serves the ball. I easily bump it back and Kara sets it so Zack can spike. 
Balkers towards the edge of the court and Leanna races to hit it. Quietly, I will a breeze to push the ball out of bounds. We start a fresh serve and volley the ball back and forth. Whenever it looks like Leanna and I are miss, I gently persuade the ball to land where we can bump it back. Or we can bump it back. Sweat trips down Zack and Kara's faces as they push themselves. Their expressions have hardened with the determination, and their trash talk ceases as they strain to keep up. Meanwhile, Leanna and my spirits are higher than ever. As Zack misses Leanna's spike, he kicks at the sand in frustration. Who the hell was in that water? They're called performance-enhancing drugs. I got them from Russia. For the first time, Amelia speaks. It is surprising that you all have not noticed that they have been casting magic for an entirety of the second half of the match. Amy! Leanna flushes as soon as Amy calls us out. I have to salvage this somehow. That's so crazy! Have they been casting? They aren't wearing the manipulators. He has a crystal which he has slipped into his pocket while using the guise of a needed refreshment. You noticed? It was quite obvious. How come you didn't say anything? I was curious of the outcome of such a maneuver. Seriously? You guys are cheating? I guess the gig is up. And you were okay with this, Liana? Her face turns bright red and she struggles to respond. She must be feeling a bit guilty since I pressured her into it. I throw Zach's words back at him. So, are you guys ready to play? You're discussing how you'll forfeit. Only if you get rid of the crystal. Fine. Without the crystal, Zack and Kara regain their lead easily and ultimately win. Leanna pouts as Zack and Kara celebrate. I still don't understand how they're so good. Neither do I. Amy brushes herself off as she stands. It is because they play upon each other's strengths. Kara's dexterity and sweat reflexes allows her free range to set up the ball for Zack's powerful strikes. We did that. Amelia gives me a blank look. Sort of. That's pretty smart of them. We mostly just split the court in half and figured if the ball fell into whoever's half, that's who would try to hit it. They really are a perfect match. Kara throws her arms around Zack as she jumps up and down in celebration. A broad smile splits his face as Zack's arms wrap around her too. Suddenly, he seems to realize what he's done and quickly lets go. Kara grins and scoots back close to him. We make a great team, don't we? You're pretty good at this. Oh, was that a compliment I just heard? Zack crosses his arms. Don't make a big deal out of it. She laughs. Well, you're pretty good at this too. With the game over, we all gather together and hang out. The sun begins descending in the sky and we enjoy the light breeze billowing around us. Collectively, we relax in the sand and enjoy the last warmth of the sun. I close my eyes as I soak in the rays, but I still feel a bit restless. I nudge Leanna. Let's go for a walk. Sure. Brushing off the sand, I get to my feet and the two of us walk in pace. The beach expands out onto the horizon. Brilliant colors paint the sky as the sun kisses the ocean line. We pass by the cliffs and both Leanna and I hear voices. She stiffens as she goes on high alert. Do you hear that? Yeah. We pick up the pace and can make out frantic yelling. Help! My head swings around as I glance wildly about me. Then my gaze focuses on a small boy gripping the edge of the cliff with his tiny fingers. His face is a wash of panic as tears stream down his face. A woman, who I assume is the mother, screams for help. Tears glistening in her eyes as a crowd forms around them. Leanna breaks from me and raises to address the boy. I'm close on her heels. Everything is going to be okay! I just need you to keep holding on, okay? The boy chokes out his words between sobs. I can't... Don't let go! Just keep holding on! Damn it! I need my manipulator! She turns on her heel and sprints back towards the group and our belongings. Leanna! Make sure he holds on! I'll be right back! My heart races as she disappears from view. The boy swings precariously on the cliffside. She'll never make it in time. I can't! You can do it. Just hang on a bit longer, okay? My hands are... <laughs> Time slows as the boy's fingers slip. <coughs> I feel helpless as I watch one hand flail and then the other, and suddenly the boy disappears as he falls. My ears pound to the beat of my heart, and all sounds are muted as if washed away by the ocean. 
He rushes through the air, but time seems to slow as I reach out my arm. The only thought in my head is to save him. I want him to slow. He's falling too fast. Slow down. Gather the wind around him and slow down. And to my surprise, he does. His descent slows and slows until he's hovering just above the ground. And then he drops ungracefully into the sand, but ultimately unhurt. His mother is right by his side, clutching him to her chest. His sobs are drowned by the tears of his mother as she scolds him with a mixture of harsh words and kisses. The scene replays in my head over and over again. How he was falling and then he wasn't. I remember reaching out my arm, and then... The wind that saved him... Was that from me? I can still feel the lingering tingle in my arm as the energy dissipates. Gradually the shock wears off and I feel life return to my limbs. I'm a bit groggy, like I've just woken up from a nap, but I still notice the intense stares a few people are giving me. Whisper snake around me and I catch words like casting and impossible. That was magic, wasn't it? The boy slowed down and then stopped in midair. You saw it, didn't you? But who could have cast it? Must have been a mage out here, watching. Yeah. They glance around looking for anyone who could be suspicious and their gaze is lined on me. Uh-oh. As their eyes narrow, Lana finally returns and rushes over. The team is right behind her, our things already gathered. Leanna gently urges me to move. Now that the boy is safe, we should get moving. Indeed, it will only cause more questions the longer we stay. As we trudge up the cliffside stairs, I can't stop wondering. Was that me? I knew I wanted to save the kid, but I wasn't wearing my manipulator. That's impossible, isn't it? And yet, I felt the unmistakable tingle of magic flew through my arm. Kara voices my thoughts in a low, urgent voice. What happened back there? I don't know. You cast it. What? Somehow, you have discovered a method in which you can cast without your manipulator. But I thought that was impossible. Yes, however, absorbing energy directly is impossible too. For you to use that internal energy to cast is a new occurrence for all of us. We don't know how to channel magic without a manipulator, so we could only teach you to cast in the only way we know how. Do you believe you could replicate such a casting? I'm not sure. Maybe here isn't the best place to be discussing this. Zack eyes the crowds of people rushing past us, presumably to check out the beach. Yeah, let's get to the inn first. We all change out of our swimsuits and then regroup. Kara leads the way and soon brings us to the inn as night falls. We sit down in a secluded corner, all wearing grave expressions. The more I think about it, the more I'm able to come to grips that I cast from within, and the more excited I feel. After all, I just did the impossible. The silence is stifling. I can feel the questions teetering on the edge of my team's lips, but no one's willing to speak up first. I want to see if I can cast that again, but the inn is the best place to do that. Leanna is the first to break the silence. So, the beach... I look at her. You cast it without a manipulator. Yeah. Hearing that still sounds so weird and unnatural. How did you do it? I have no idea. Everything happened so fast. Perhaps you can recall certain stimuli which may have affected you differently. I think back. The kid was falling and I didn't want him to get hurt, and then it just happened. Was there a technique you used which is different than what you normally do? I don't know. I reached out, and then energy shot out of my arm. Did the energy feel any different? Amy raises a brow at Kara. What? I'm not a caster. Maybe a bit more concentrated? I really don't remember. My mind was focused on other things. Amy frowns. There must have been an effect which triggered the change in cast. Something which allowed you to connect with your inner reservoir of energy. If you could just recall what it is, you could replicate the cast. My mind is a swirl of thoughts. Leanna notices my discomfort. Maybe we should table this discussion for later. It is imperative that we discover how to recreate the cast. I agree, but we may be more successful if he tries to cast again. And the inn isn't the ideal place to practice. Amy pauses, then nods. You are correct. We shall attempt to recast again when we are more isolated. Maybe we should figure out our next steps for finding the Water Temple. You're right. We had our break at the beach, but we did come here for a reason. 
This city is the closest to the islands along the coast. If I recall correctly, the exact location of the water temple has been lost to even Elder Isom. My assumption would be that it is located on one of those islands, similar to how the Wind Temple is located on the Floating Isles. An intelligent assumption, but one that will keep you from the true location, I fear. We turn to the stranger approaching our table. His silver hair is pulled back out of his face to reveal kind brown eyes. He is tall in stature with a sturdy build, but the rugged lines in his face show his age. He offers us a genuine smile through his full beard. That which has been hidden from memory is safely stored beneath nature's rocky peaks. What? Who is this guy and why is he eavesdropping on our conversation? Zack narrows his eyes. And who are you? Just a simple bard. A bard? The man's eyes light up. He clears his throat. I warned the lonely soul not to seek comfort from the sea. For her will cannot be tamed, and when she pulls him into a watery bosom for his death, she cannot be blamed. Suddenly, Leanna hops out of her chair, topples over with a clatter. Her cheeks are rosy, and her voice grows in enthusiasm as she finishes the recitation. And yet still he sought her bravely, waiting ever deep. And far beneath her sea foam lace, his secrets she will keep. Her eyes shine with a bright wonder as she stares transfixed at the man. He grins at her. That was beautiful. I thank you. I love the poetry of Gigalane. It's great to meet someone who also knows of his work. The man grins, but doesn't say more. When did you come across his poem? Just after I finished writing it, I suppose. Dana looks as if she just had a heart attack. Y y you're Gigalane? He nods and bows slightly. Lena takes in a sharp breath of air, then squeals excitedly. I can't believe I'm talking to THE Gingalane! She hops up and down in excitement and giggles like a schoolgirl. Her face is flushed and there are stars in her eyes. Your poems and stories are what got me through my toughest years at the Academy! So she was one of those teens. W would it be okay if... I mean, it's just such an honor. Can I shake your hand? In response, Gingalane holds Leanna's hands in his own, and she lets out a squeak at his touch. I am honored to meet someone who has such a deep appreciation for my work. Who's Gingalane? Kara and Zack wear the same blank expression I have. You don't know him? The famous bard! He's traveled throughout Asaria, recording the stories of adventurers. His poems are known throughout Havenguard. He's a legend! You give me too much credit. You're just being humble. Leanna looks completely smitten. I don't get the appeal of celebrities. But keep in mind, next time I do this, I'm going to choose he's not a rocket scientist. It may sound rude, I don't remember what the first option was, but just be aware, I'm going to call him out. It's just we're saving that for the full game. Even back home, I never followed celebrity culture. I'm sure this guy's work is good, but I'm not falling into the hype. Oh, actually, I think I have heard of this guy. You wrote about the thief in the purple marble, right? He seems pleasantly surprised. Mm, one of my earlier works. I am pleased people are still familiar with it. It is a fun little tale. That doesn't explain why you're here. Or why you were listening in on us. Oh, I'm sorry if I overstepped. But it's been a long time since I'd heard anyone talk about the temples. I couldn't help but be interested. And it sounds like you could use some help, too. I can guide you to the entrance of the Water Temple. It's located below the mountain valley. How do you know where it is? He knowingly taps his nose. As a bard, I do come across all manner of stories and information. He strokes his beard in thought. If you're open to the suggestion, I'd be happy to show you where it is. Why would you want to join us? I'll admit my motives are a bit selfish. If your adventure is seeking out the temple, I'd like to share in your adventure. Leanna gasps. You want to record a story about us? He nods. I promise I won't be dead weight. I know the journey through the temples is treacherous, but I have heard a lot about them through my own travels. Zack seems skeptical. Stories are stories. How do we know if your information is accurate? Kara nods. Yeah, that one about the thief seemed pretty fantastical. Because he's Gingalane! He doesn't need to make up stories. He bases them all on real events. 
Throughout this, Amelia had been scanning through Elder Isom's notes. Perhaps there is merit in what the bard says. If even Elder Isom had trouble had difficulty locating it, then it must be well hidden. We do know that the Aquarians use the nearby mountains as defenses against neighboring tribes. It is not unlikely that the temple could have been built within the mountain. Difficult terrain deters unwanted visitors. Then it's settled. Gangalan can lead us to the temple. Amelia nods. It would be valuable to have the aid of a knowledgeable bard such as he. I spent many a late night reading through his tales of past heroes. They are quite fascinating. Gingalain smiles warmly. They deserve all the recognition they've received. Carr eyes the people trickling into the inn. They talk animatedly about the secret mage at the beach today. It is getting a bit late. Maybe we should turn in for the night. We can head to the water temple tomorrow with the help of our new guide. Agreed. I also don't really want to talk and listen to people talk about the beach incident. What if there's unli- What if there's an unlikely chance someone recognizes me? King Elaine smiles at us and pushes himself to his feet. I'm very excited to see this next adventure unfold. I will meet you here in the morning. We say our goodbyes and head upstairs. As I get ready for bed, I notice that Pongo never returned. He's probably decided to spend the night with the girls. The lucky Pongo gets to go wherever he likes. I crawl into my bed and eventually fall into a dreamless sleep. So I'm going to put a break here. I was planning to actually record the Water Temple and have that go up this weekend also, but the thing is, I do not want to do Amelia's voice. I'm going to try to give the game a week to see if her voice actress turns up to give the lines. If not, then we'll plow forward as usual. Um, if you're wondering, the game did receive an update since the previous weekend, and I don't know what it was added, what was fixed, what was changed, or anything like that. It's just... I'm going to stall a little bit so you don't have to put up with me doing another female voice like Fata Morgana. But anyway, that is where we're going to wrap things up for now.